I'm Pete Fairley with the Hall of Fame. I'm sitting with Hall of Famer Warren Sapp. Take us back to Saturday, February 2nd, and the moment you heard your name called as having been elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Groundhog's Day, so I don't mind rewinding it in my mind or literally or <laughs> the actual day. I mean, because it was one of those days where, you know, everything got going fast. And then it slowed all the way down. So around 3.30, you're waiting on the network. Yeah, you know, they want to send a camera following me around. I'm like, no, because, you know, I had my choice friends. I had Thad, George Chin, Paul Orr, Cadillac, my guys, you know, the guys that came to New Orleans. I've known them for 15 plus years. So anything I say is pretty much like a, tie, a client turning privilege. They're not going to say a uh -huh. word because I said worse. <laughs> so we sit down yelling at the TV, yelling at Rod Wilson, yelling at the dudes talking. And I'm like, don't they supposed to start this at 430? So my phone go to going off then. And I don't know who's on it, but I just turn, I just roll them all over like, mm -hmm. nah, not right now. Because mm -hmm. I don't know who's texting and I don't want to read anything. So we all looking at the TV and I'm standing on the little desk lamp. <laughs> I'll give you a picture before I leave. <laughs> I'm standing up there looking at the TV and I'm yelling at the TV. <laughs> it's funny you were making me remember this. I'm yelling at the TV like, you better. And they're going down these names and it's numeric, I mean alphabetical. So once they go Robinson, and that's the sixth dude, I'm like, it's me and straight hand at this point because that's the only thing left is S. I mean, that's, that's all that's left. And it almost goes blank. And when he said my name, that's the first time I've ever heard my name echo in my own head. Like, sad. That's awesome. It's one of those moments that you'll never, ever forget. And somebody took a picture and all of us are wrapped. So, let's go. Now, you've played in the Hall of Fame game twice. Once, yes. Once with the Buccaneers, once, once with, with the Raiders. Raiders. Yeah. At either of those trips, had you, looking across from the stadium, looking back at the Hall of Fame, did you ever think that you're going to have a bronze bust in here someday? No. I stole a football the first time I came. It was the 35th <laughs> game, so I still have that one at home with the branding on the side. <laughs> the 35th Hall of Fame game, I have it. I have the ball, so I'll bring it back and get a 50 and put them together. That's 15 years removed. Not bad. But you've had a lot of great moments in your career. Is there one game or one particular play or moment that stands out among all the others? Me and Derek Brooks, after making back-to-back -back plays in the Super Bowl, my sack calls fumble, they got it back. Ugh. And then him picking it off, running it back. Me and him in the back of that end zone, when I grabbed him and he's looking at me and he's like, I said, we got it. This was ours. And it was me and him from 17-year-old kids back at the Florida-Georgia game together. Two kids that played against each other in college, Florida State and Miami. Two kids that had came to the yucks that they call us, the Tampa Bay Yuckany as they mm -hmm. call us. And we were going to make this thing better. And right at that moment, I got my arms around him. He's walking. And, and we're walking from the end zone together. 55-99, 5-5-99. I mean, and he's crying. I mean, he's bawling. And I pushed him out of my arms and I said, get away from me. You're about to make me cry. And, you know, as I sit here right now, that's the greatest moment that I had on a football field is with my roommate. That was my roommate all those years. So we had brought a championship to Tampa and what nothing, nobody could tell us that was going to take it from us. Now this summer, making your enshrinement even more special is the fact the Hall of Fame is going to be celebrating our golden <sighs> anniversary reunion. We're expecting up to 130 Hall of Famers to be on hand to welcome you and your six new classmates in. Now as a fan, it doesn't get any cooler than that. As a what? player, it doesn't get any more cooler than that. <laughs> Willie Lanier called me on the phone. Hall of Famer 131. Yeah, that's his number, 131. <laughs> so he told me, he said, I'm going to tell you this right now, son. You're engaged. And I'm like, wait a minute, I've been married and divorced, I'm engaged again? I ain't, I ain't get a ring out of it. <laughs> I'm engaged, and there's a wedding on the third. And there's, there's no eloping, there's no running, there's no nothing. It's, come on in. And I'm like, okay. I, I'm, I'm waiting for my, I, I'm waiting on it. I, I'm going to embrace this, I promise you, because as a small town country boy from Plymouth, Florida, without air conditioning or cable television, this was my thing. I can go through the history of this game and with the best of them, point them out, you know? 
Now you have some uh, pretty impressive numbers from your career. <sighs> Nearly 100 sacks as a defensive tackle, four times you had double digit sack totals. You went uh, to seven Pro Bowls, two all decade teams. But what about this number? More than 969,000 followers on Twitter. <laughs> you know, I, they're, they're loyal. But even more than that, I interact, you know, because I'm a talker. And I use my fingers to do my talking. And, you know, I, I really enjoy the back and forth sometimes because I was thinking about it in this way because I, I grew up in the, the 80s, you know, when Brent Musburger, Jimmy DeGree, you know, Phyllis George, the, the, the uh, what was it, Miss America was now, you know, we had something, you know. And we watched it, and it was about, you know, like having your peace, you know what I'm saying? Your, your, your peace and if you, your team and all of that. And I was thinking if I was a kid and I could pick up the, my computer and type to Tony Hill and Tony Hill mm -hmm. type back, you know, number mm -hmm. 80 in sure. Dallas Cowboys, yeah. when things huh? get shady, that old 80, that's my, that was my guy. So if I had a chance to talk with him and he talked back or retweeted or LOL me, oh my God. I mean, just imagine that as a six, seven year old kid, you know, cause my hero was my brother. My older brother ran for 348 yards in a high school football game, five touchdowns. So my first superstar I met was in my own living room. So <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine what it's like to reach at, you know, one of us and then we come back. Cause I've seen some of the tweets, oh my God, you made my like, day, I could die now. You know, just some of the crazy mm -hmm. stuff because you never think you have an opportunity to correspond back and forth, but that's a beautiful way to, to make this game and to make us come alive even more. Now, I know you have to get going because you got to start working on your speech. Warren Sapp, six others getting enshrined on Saturday, August 3rd. Thanks, Warren. Pleasure.